In this series of videos, we're going to be talking about solving linear inequalities. And eventually we're going to talk about solving inequalities that get a little bit more complicated. Talking about compound inequalities, quadratic inequalities, and rational inequalities. So if you watch the whole series, you'll see everything. So the thing with linear inequalities is that we're going to solve these in much the same way we solved linear equations. You know, what you do to one side of the equation, you, you do to the other side. The same thing is going to be true to, uh, to inequalities. What you do on one side of an inequality, you have to do the same thing to the other side. The only thing you have to watch out for is that if you multiply or divide by a negative, the inequality symbol is going to flip around. Uh, for example, let's look at these. If we need to solve x plus 8 is greater than 23, getting x by itself shouldn't be that big of a deal. We just need to subtract 8 on both sides like this. So we have x is greater than 15. So here we just subtracted 8 on both sides, so the order that we have with the inequality is still going to be true. It's not going to flip around. But compare that to having the inequality negative 8x is greater than 48. If this were an equation, you would divide both sides by the coefficient, which is negative 8, just like that. Really, no big deal, right? But here, since we are dividing by a negative, that means the inequality symbol is going to flip around. So instead of it being greater, it's going to become less than. And so we have this inequality. So th that's really the big thing. When it comes to these inequalities, if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, the inequality symbol is going to flip around. Now, this is solving the inequality, but let's make sure that we write our answer in interval notation. So there are a lot of different ways of writing and expressing our solution set. You could just say x is greater than 15. You could go to a number line and graph your solution set. Now, I graph mine a little bit differently than um, maybe the textbook does because this is how I've been graphing them for years. Okay, so at 15, I'm going to put a circle. And since I'm greater but not equal to, this is going to remain an open circle that denotes uh, we can get as close to 15 as we want to, but we're not going to include it. X, which represents your solutions, are those numbers that are greater than 15. So that means on the right side of 15, like that. And so interval notation takes this section of the number line and it writes it in a nice condensed way. So you have to always go from left to right, least to greatest. So this is going from 15 out to the right, and this guy goes out to the right without stopping, and so we use that infinity symbol. So we're going from 15 to 8. Now, for the most part, when you have these, uh, when you have interval notation, you're going to be using parentheses, unless you have an endpoint that is included, filled in, in which case you would use a bracket on that particular value. So here I'm not including 15, so I'm going to use parentheses, and I'm not including infinity, and so I'm going to use parentheses on that as well. So it's very clear to anybody who understands the context of this problem that we're talking about this section of the number line from 15 to infinity, but not including 15 because of the parentheses. Over here on this other example, the only number that we care about is negative 6. We are not including negative 6 because of the way the inequality is structured. right? It doesn't have the or equal to part x being our solutions are those values that are less than negative 6. That means to the left of negative 6. And again, we want to write our solution set using interval notation, and we go from left to right. Um, on the far left here, this guy is going all the way to the left, and so just as we denoted positive infinity on the right side, we're going to use negative infinity to describe how as you go to the left of 0, those negative values get bigger and bigger, without bounds, so we use negative infinity. So we're coming from negative infinity to negative 6. We have no endpoints that are included, so we're going to use parentheses for both of these. And so this is what we mean whenever we say to use interval notation to express the solution set. The number line would be using a graph to express your, your, your solution set. 
right? So hopefully not a big deal. All right, let's take a look at an example that's going to require more than just a single step. Let's take the inequality, 3x minus 17 is greater than or equal to 40. Now remember what I said at the top of this video. We said that we solve inequalities in much the same way that we solve equations. So if this were an equal sign instead of an inequality, think about what you would do to get x by itself. The first thing would be to add 17 to both sides. And adding 17 isn't going to set off any alarms where we have to change the direction of the inequality, so it's going to stay as greater than or equal to 40 plus 17 is 57. And then we want to get x by itself, so we divide both sides by 3. Notice that adding isn't cause for changing the direction of the inequality, nor is division by 3. Remember, it's only when you multiply or divide by a negative number. So, this stays as greater than or equal to 57 divided by 3 is 19. And off to the side, we can do our number line. The only number that I really care about is 19. And we see that we are and we have the option of being equal to 19, so this is going to be a filled in circle. So that shows that I'm including that, and greater than means going out to the right. And then we write this using interval notation. As we go from left to right, we start at 19, we go to the right toward infinity. Since 19 is included, we're going to use a bracket. And that bracket is going to be is going to denote to everybody that we are including 19 in the solution set where above when I had parentheses on the 15 or on the negative 6 that meant that you could get as close to 15 as you wanted to but you were not including it or you could get as close to negative 6 as you wanted to but still you weren't including it the bracket says yes 19 itself is a solution and then you put parentheses everywhere else so for the infinity because you never get to infinity, so you can never stop and say, I'm including you, and you're part of the solution set. Now, just a few more examples of this so you can get an idea about the kinds of things that we can run into. If we had an example like this, from negative 5 to 4, and I had for some reason this being my solution set. So you see that we're going from negative 5 to 4, right? That's where the, the blue shaded region is. You see we have the closed circle on the negative 5, so that means we're going to use a bracket on negative 5. We also have a closed circle on 4, so that means he would also get a bracket. And so that's how we would denote the interval notation for that particular um, section of the number line. But what if we have something like this? We have 7 and 10. And suppose now we have this. So we're including 7 and going to the left. We are not including 10, but we're going to the right. So this is something that we could totally see in terms of our solution set, and we would need to translate this into interval notation. If I just look at the left piece right here, this guy is coming from negative infinity, so from negative infinity to 7. So that's parentheses on negative infinity and bracket on 7. Again, the bracket is because you are including that point. There is a gap right here. And so what we have to do is use a special symbol called the union symbol. And it looks like a letter U, but it's not. It's just that little semicircle-ish type shape. And then this other piece where you go from 10 to infinity, so you're not including 10, that's parentheses. That's going to be 10, 
going out to the right toward infinity, which would still get parentheses. So that's just something that we can see when we have a union going on here. Uh, these guys are going in opposite directions, and they're both including our solutions. So we have to join them somehow, and we use this symbol. Please be careful. We use this symbol. You do not write that. If I see a tail on that union sign, well, then it's going to be wrong. Okay, I'm going to cut it off, and you're going to lose points for that. Also, whenever you're doing this in my math app, you have to use their special symbol for the union sign. You can't do um, shift U. You can't do a capital U. It's going to count it wrong. So just watch out for that. Now, like I said, for interval notation, you're going to use parentheses pretty much everywhere unless you have an endpoint that's included, in which case you're going to see that we end up using a bracket.